so make a DAO is a permissionless lending protocol to allow users to borrow do, uh, loans and die die it's a stable coin packed to the dollar and um, and obviously users can actually uh, borrow die um, against their own assets uh, without any middleman so the protocol is entirely powered by smart contracts uh, which is essentially a, a robot vending machine if you may say um, you know, trades are automated according to a logic that can be, be breached. So, you know, like it's self-executed when certain terms and conditions are met. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, there's this whole tokenization front. We started uh, using, allowing users to actually use tokenized uh, real-world assets as collaterals in the system to borrow loans and die. Um, so what is tokenization, right? I mean, tokenization involves conversion of uh, ownership rights uh, over an asset uh, uh, into a digital token. So a lot of different items can be tokenized. For example, financial assets like bonds, um, um, uh, uh, bonds, it's, it's one, and then we have real estate, uh, like a uh, property, and then we have like artwork, and then we have intangible, um, items such as carbon credits and uh, even computing resources. So, 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 so this is to uh, so this is tokenization of real world assets, and make it out, it's it's empowering that as well. Make it out as a DAO, right? And DAO stands for a decentralized autonomous organization. So meaning that uh, uh, there is no CEO, there's no hierarchical structure such as CEO or CFO or CEO uh, in the organization. Um, a lot of uh, the key decision making processes uh, it's has to be voted in or has to go through the governance process. So meaning that uh, token holders um have to stick their tokens um to vote on uh the chain the key changes in the protocol itself for example let me just quote you an example um we have different collaterals in the protocol we have uh the crypto assets and then we have the real world assets uh but the thing is you know how much uh debt ceiling or, or how much loans are we uh, do we allow users to borrow from a, a particular collateral in the protocol that decision has to be voted in by the maker token holder. Um, and um, as opposed to a traditional organization, you know, you have a board of maybe say 20 people um, um, voting on all these key decisions made to the company. Uh, but for a DAO like Maker DAO, we have, you know, at least 40 to 50 unique token holders voting upon uh, decisions like this. Make it out. We have a two steps governance process. Number one, polling. We go out there. Uh, we post a signal thread on uh the forum, the Make It Out forum, and then we get community to 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 uh we start sussing out the sentiments among all the community users, and um and then uh, followed by an executive voting. That's when Make a Token holders will have to stake their tokens to to execute a, a decision. And that's also when the actual changes to the protocol will take place. Users can participate in governance, right? They can now dictate how a protocol works by voting with their own governance tokens. Uh, and uh, for example, what other features to add to a to a new uh, to a protocol and even the future mission of the protocol itself um um yeah i mean th th this is somewhat like you know users get to own and control uh part of the whole web tree infrastructure by by just buying governance tokens and and in it and yeah and think of it like you know it's a voting right stocks but you do make a uh a, a, a real change in, in the protocol itself. Yeah, I mean, there are no laws or regulations to define what uh, a protocol or 
uh, content uh, which can be published. So it will be, I mean, it becomes a huge headache for the regulators to control it uh, and to find out who is responsible for a certain protocol. As you know, there are a lot of protocols um, uh, protocols out there where there are a non-founders or a non-contributors uh, uh, contributing um, and, um, and and basically no one knows who's that person behind coding away, right? Um, and what I feel is that the regulation is still far away from the technologies and regulators are making efforts to understand what we are trying to do here. And obviously during this period, you see a lot of scammers, you know, finding new ways to abuse the system. And this is not good for the entire ecosystem. Uh, you see a lot of fraud, you see a lot of hacks, and then you see a lot of security breaches. Uh, and, and these are all going to deter mass adoption if these issues are not addressed. Um, and I mean, and, 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 and also the key risk that all these regulators uh, are, are, are trying to address is money laundering and terrorist financing, right? But then obviously with DeFi, um, if you start KYCing your customers, um, that would, uh, that, that, that essentially means that it's defy the purpose of decentralization because decentralization means that you are supposed to give equal access to people regardless where uh, the users actually come from or users' backgrounds. And um, uh, yeah, I think this is a, a balance that uh, protocols or projects have to strike, you know, uh, to be um, on the good front of the regulators, you know, to make sure that we play a part in, in, in uh, KYC or compliance but at the same time, to preserve the whole uh, ethos of decentralization. And this is difficult.